Hello everyone. The book we're going to be talking about today has three things I don't think you can argue with. First, it's a book about the occult. Second, it's a book, it's about a person's search for a rare uh, book. And third, it contains rituals concerning sex magic. So if you like any of those things, you are going to love this book as much as I did. And let's talk about all that right now. All right, so the book we're going to be talking about today is called The Book of the Most Precious Substance by Sarah Gran. Uh, this, is, this came out earlier in 2022, and it's been on my to-read list for a while. Uh, I bought the book because I thought it had an interesting premise, but I wasn't quite sure if it was going to be a horror book or not. And so I, you know, it's just sat there and sat there, and I finally decided to read it. Uh, this book was marketed, actually. I think uh, it, it, the marketing was kind of misleading because uh, everybody said it was an er erotic, <laughs> erotic thriller, right? Uh, because it does contain things about uh, rituals and sex magic and things like that. Uh, so let's get this out of the way, first of all. The erotic part of this book, the erotica that's uh, in this book, it's... Uh, it's very tame in comparison to a lot of things. In fact, I think you get more, uh, more of a visual description <laughs> of sexual activity in a modern romance book than you would in this one. Uh, but this author doesn't spend a lot of time on these scenes. It's not uh, overtly pornographic in any way. Uh, it's nothing like that. So if, if you're worried, uh, if you're a person that doesn't really like a lot of uh, sex mixed up with your horror, you know, uh, you'll be happy to hear that. If you're a person that loves uh, sex mixed in with your horror, yeah, you probably won't like that. <laughs> but uh, but uh, it's not very graphic and it's not very detailed. Uh, it's just enough to push the plot along. And as a matter of fact, uh, you don't even see or hear about a naked body until you're well into the book. Uh, so it's not a pervasive theme of the book. And that's why I say I think they marketed it, uh, it wrong. Because this is really a, a horror story about the occult, uh, more or less. And it concerns a woman, our main protagonist, named Lily. And uh, Lily grew up poor, but then she wrote a book. And this book just happened to be loved by critics, happened to be loved by readers. Uh, it soon went to the top of the charts, became a, a national bestseller, and she found herself in a position uh, any writer would probably be envious of. She had some celebrity in the, in the book world, you know. Uh, she had money rolling in, uh, sold out uh, venues for her book signings and uh, speeches and things. And she was married to a man that uh, she really, really loved. They had a, uh, an almost uh, perfect relationship of sorts. They were, they were true soulmates to each other. But then, unfortunately, something happened to her husband, a medical condition. Um, and she can't, she can't write anymore. She couldn't write anymore after this happened. And all of the money they had uh, started going away because her husband needed... Uh, uh, around around the clock care, uh, he needed medical equipment. He needed uh, you know medicines and things, and their uh, money slowly started to dwindle. And to try to make ends meet, she decided to sell her book collection, which was uh, has some very rare, hard to find books. Uh, not enough to make her rich, but enough to keep their head above water. And so she found herself instead of writing another book. Uh, as part of this world, this little subculture that everybody knows exists, but we don't hear much about it. And that's uh, people who deal in rare books, finding them for clients who had the money, uh, buying them themselves, selling them for a profit. You know, they know all about the books. They can verify the, if the books are authentic or not and all that good stuff. And there's a good amount of weird characters in this world that you'll be happy to read about as I was. Uh, and in a roundabout kind of way, she finds out about a client 
who wants to purchase a book that's very, very rare. And some people say it's an urban legend. It doesn't exist. It's called The Book of the Most Precious Substance. Yeah, that's the title. And uh, But he's willing to pay maybe millions of dollars for it. And she knows with that kind of money, uh, uh, she can have some breathing room, you know, with her husband and uh, not have to uh, struggle so much financially. So she enlists the aid of a fellow bookseller and book collector, uh, Lucas. Uh, he has some money. He has a lot of contacts uh, that she doesn't have. And they agree to split the profits that they make from the sale of this book if it exists and if they can track it down. They, get also, they also get a generous uh, down payment from the person who wants to purchase this book. <clears throat> and off they go on an adventure. But this book is something special. It was written in the 17th century, and it involves uh, five sexual acts as rituals that one must perform, each one becoming weirder and, more, uh, and harder to obtain and harder to do. And it's said that nobody's ever completed all five because the last one is absolutely horrific. And uh, even though people have been willing to do it, it has not turned out well for them. Uh, but if you perform all five of these, of, of the sex magic rituals <laughs> uh, in this book, it's said to give you whatever your heart wants, whatever you desire. That could be wealth, it could be celebrity, it could be power. Uh, and uh, you know the old saying, anybody that wants power that bad probably are the same people that should not have it. Uh, and that certainly holds true in this book because they could have unlimited power according to the uh, uh, rumors about this, about this ritual, about these rituals and about this book is what I'm trying to say. But there's only five copies that were ever made and they were all handmade by a uh, uh, practitioner of the dark magics uh, in the 17th century. There have been no reproductions made. Uh, People have taken videos and pictures of it, but they never turn out. This book does not want to tell its secrets to anybody unless they own it. Um, and there's said to only be two or three that exist in the entire world in the hands of private collectors. So they go on this worldwide journey to talk to different people who either claim to have uh, seen the book, actually touched it, and performed some of the rituals in there. Other people who claim to have a copy, or at least a partial copy, uh, and other people who claim that they don't have a copy, but they know uh, where to find one. So they go, they go off on this great adventure. And each person you meet uh, that they're talking to about this book are all very uniquely written. I really love these characters. Uh, of course, you're going to meet rich, famous people, you know, like rock stars and uh, uh, tech billionaires and... Uh, Anybody who could afford or to, to have a book like this or to know, be around people who uh, would have a book like this, you know? It's a very small, unique set of people that would actually know anything about this. Uh, but each character is written so well uh, that they meet and they have entire chapters devoted to them so they're not just throwaway uh, conversations. You actually, we actually spend time with all these characters. Uh, that has something to do with this book. And I really, really like that. And even though they started out, uh, Lily and Lucas started out thinking about the money, the book seems to be drawing them closer to it. The book, it's almost like uh, every dead end, all of a sudden, something opens up. It's like the book wants it to be discovered by them. And of course, they start thinking, the appeal of the book, the freedom it would give them if maybe they should start performing these rituals as they find out about them one by one and uh, see what happens. Can they take it the whole way? Obviously, nobody else has, and anybody that's tried has uh, had really terrifying, horrible things happen to them. Uh, but the book has its appeal. The book has its draw. And uh, the money is always on their mind, but it kind of becomes secondary in their search. The more they find out about it and the longer they talk to some of these characters that claim to have done these things or, or seen the book or even own the book. And then there's just a big wild conclusion at the end. Uh, 
and we get to see exactly how far they'll go. And not everybody is as they seem in this book. And uh, one thing I really like about this book is that it's really the journey of Lily. And, uh, you know, it's written in her voice and the experiences and the feelings she has. But this author uh, is really good at uh, describing things without uh, boring you. It's very crisp, very quick paced, um, very fast. And it keeps you engaged page after page after page. And uh, uh, my only regret is that I didn't read it earlier. All that talk about being an erotic thriller, you know, instead of a horror story kind of threw me off. But trust me, it is a horror story about the occult. And uh, it might not be as bloody as some other books out there. So the gore hounds may not uh, like it as much, uh, but it does get bloody near the end. And it, it's really the story. And the, the book is a driving force behind this story and how far people will go in their time of grief and their time of loss and maybe try to change things and, and find themselves again and try to get some happiness in their life that hasn't been there for years and years as she was taking care of her husband's needs and he wasn't able to respond. Uh, it's a great book. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I wish the horror community would be talking more about it. Uh, because I just loved it. And I'll leave a link down below if you want to purchase it on Amazon. I highly recommend you do. I'll also leave a link below to my Twitter feed. Come and be a twit with me. And as always, thank you for taking a little bit of your time and spending it with me. I really, really appreciate it. And until we meet again, keep reading spooky, my friends. <laughs>